beyond, uh, I guess the, the, there's another dimension to this, and, and you, you might have briefly touched on it, but I want to return to it now. You were saying largely this is something targeted at management teams and those in the private sector. Um, and I'm also quite interested, I guess, in the scope of the work that you guys have done in some of the public sector facing work, because although the problems might sort of have their own nuance uh, because the public sector might have a much broader scope and mandate than maybe what uh, management teams in the private sector might have. Um, what one would think that this idea of blue oceans does fit quite neatly into this idea of, you know, what Mariana Machucato calls an entrepreneurial or innovative state, um, and a state that is able, I guess, to break new ground, be a market maker, not only just intervene uh, in fixing some market failures. Talk to us about some of your experiences in the public sector realm and how those have contributed to sort of creating value innovating states rather than just those in the private sector. Okay, so first of all, a few examples which are not a product of my work, uh, let's say, uh, but I, they really employ blue ocean strategy as part of their national strategy. And one example is Singapore. Uh, they even have a, a board called uh, VIET, Valley Innovation uh, Action Tank, if I am right. So they really look at the blue ocean strategy as a way to you know, bring more uh, foreign direct investment, um, identify uh, industries to invest in, to, to create uh, growth corridors. So that's one example. I would say Dubai itself is a, is a typical example of a blue ocean strategy. If you can imagine, you know, uh, a country where you know doesn't have the same resources as their neighbors, but they're able to attract uh, lots of uh, investments in uh, areas like tourism, uh, finance, and so on. So that you know makes it uh, a touristic hub these days. Who uh, thought of that uh, a few years ago, right? Uh, so, and there are many other countries uh, employing uh, like explicitly blue ocean strategy. Uh, for example, Taiwan, uh, Korea, uh, Indonesia. Also, they have some initiatives in tourism. Uh, and if I'm if I'm not wrong, uh, even as uh, Vaziland, uh, the king announced uh, a few years ago uh, some uh, initiative on blue ocean strategy. Um, for my own experience, uh, that was uh, with the professor Kim in uh, in Malaysia, and the idea was to um, advise the government on uh, how to create economic growth and uh, social uh, inclusiveness. And um, like I said, you start with looking at all those uh, revenue generators, the industries, for example, as a portfolio. And you, you cannot invest, you have limited resources, right? You, you cannot invest in everything. You have to identify the hotspots where you can get lots of uh, outputs with smaller resources. And th th those will be the future uh, pioneers, let's say. And for those, you clear all these bureaucratic processes, you make it easy to invest in, and you create opportunities for different uh, actors to come and invest. And the idea is to bring, again, foreign direct investments. That was the, the objective. Um, also, more like picking your and selecting your winners uh, and effectively creating an enabling regulatory environment uh, uh, for not only foreign investment, but domestic investment. Exactly. You connect different actors. Uh, uh, for example, Malaysia is, uh, you know, majority of, uh, of the population, uh, they're Malays and they're Muslims, but they're also part of Commonwealth. So mm -hmm. the idea is like how to connect, you know, these great uh, opportunities, uh, you know, bringing maybe Islamic finance, but also creating completely new positioning and nice. create, uh, regional hubs, uh, hubs uh, in terms of economic growth. Sure, sure, sure. Other what? applications? Sorry? Yeah. Sorry, I didn't get Like sub-level sub applications in the public sector would be working with different ministries or agencies and try to create um, high impact, low cost, and rapid execution uh, moves that go across uh, departments. Uh, one example was uh, moving uh, 10,000 police officers from uh, uh, bureaucratic work into crime-fighting activities 
thus rapidly increasing the, the number of uh, police on the streets, uh, which helped really reducing the petty crime rate uh, by 30% in the first uh, six months. And the petty crime, was, was, although was not like the biggest problem, but in terms of perception, uh, that was one of the, the biggest problems. So really helped also aligning public perception. Yeah, and that's certainly, I guess, an example that might have some resonance for us here in South Africa, where it's certainly from a perceptive level being seen as something that um, is a limiter or a limitation to uh, a growing our tourism revenue and our tourism numbers.